All right, today we are finally pulling this thing back out and fixing the engine. For those who don't remember, this engine, there's a gasket in here somewhere that is bad. That's just mixing all the oil with the coolant, a bunch of coolant with the oil, just mixing everything. And um, I did buy a complete gasket set for this engine. The reason I bought a complete one is because I have no idea what gasket is bad. So I just bought, bought them all and whatever is bad, we'll just replace them. Now I'm kind of hoping it's just as simple as the water pump gas. Because people have been telling me in the comments that uh, that these uh, these engines are known to have their water pump gasket fail. So that may, I'm hoping that's it. And if it is, it's a simple fix. Um, so the first thing we need to drain the coolant, drain the oil, and then let's check the water pump seal. And uh, if it's not that, then we'll have to uh, dive deeper in this thing and figure out what it is. Alright, so I took off the water pump and also the oil cooler. I'm really trying not to have to take this engine out of the frame. It's, it, I really don't want to do it. It'd be a nightmare process. It's a nightmare, it's a nightmare process to get this engine in and out of the frame, so I'm really trying not to do it. But um, I did find that the oil cooler is damaged. I bought a new one. I'll show that to you once the new one gets here. But one thing we need to do just to make sure that it's not the uh, the head gasket is we need to check the compression on each cylinder. Now the reason I haven't done that yet is because the gauge that I have just doesn't work with the small spark plugs that this engine comes with. So what I did was I went on Amazon, paid 20 bucks, and bought this super cheap engine compression tester kit. The only reason I bought it was because it came with this tiny little 10 millimeter adapter and this is the adapter that I've been needing to fit inside the spark plug holes. And the one that I had just didn't come with this little, uh, this little adapter. So I'm definitely going to be using the one that I already have because I trust this one a little bit more. So uh, now we can finally check to see if we have good compression on this engine. It's not really threading it all the way, but let's just try it. And I do have the throttle wide open. so. All right, so that cylinder is uh, almost at 150. So I'd say it's good. All right, almost at 150. Alright, that's a, at the same. Almost at 150. Alright, 
Same thing. Almost at 150. Now, I'm not 100% sure if that really tells us if the head gasket is... If it tells us that the head gasket is good around the pistons, but I'm not sure about the head gasket around the oil and coolant passages. So, I'm not really sure what that really tells us, but um, I guess we have... At least we have good compression, so that's a good thing. Alright, so after considering it for a day and uh, doing a post on Instagram asking you guys can I have good compression but a bad head gasket? You guys are saying yes, so <laughs> let's just let's just do it. Let's fix this thing once and for all. Let's take the head out. I think I'm going to be able to do it without taking this engine out. All I really need to do, need to do is take the uh, hoses off, take the carburetors off, take off some of the wiring, and then pretty much everything else is pretty accessible in here. So. Uh, Let's just do it. Let's try. Let's just fix this thing once and for all. So the new oil cooler just got here in the mail. Uh, this is the old one. This this thing looks uh, 
in pretty bad shape. Now the reason I bought a new one is because this, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this on this camera. Uh, if you can't, I'll put pictures on the screen of um, the damage. Basically, uh, there's where this part attaches to on the engine, there's an O-ring that goes in between it, and there's pitting on the metal right where the O-ring goes. So, I don't know if this was the cause for the oil and coolant mixing, or or if it was a head gasket. All I know is this part's damaged, I'm replacing it with a new one. I paid like 13 bucks for this on eBay, so uh, let's install the new one and finalize assembling this thing. I was working pretty late last night trying to get this thing finished. My memory card on my camera filled up. I didn't feel like running back upstairs and grabbing. You guys didn't miss much. You guys have probably seen me take apart, take the, take this thing apart and reassemble it countless times. So everything's back on. Um, I did fill the engine full of oil. Uh, I put water in the coolant just because I do want to flush the coolant system out. And I just put water in it for now, so therefore we can easily do that. Um, now I'm not 100% sure. On the timing, the timing was a little tricky on this engine just because there was no timing marks on the crankshaft, which was a little tricky. I did a post on Instagram asking you guys, what do I do? There's no timing marks on the manual. It says there's supposed to be timing marks, and you guys had suggestions of taking a metal rod and shoving it in the, in the uh, uh, spark plug hole on cylinder number one and finding top dead center that way. So that's what I did. Hopefully it's correct. Hopefully it'll work. I do not feel like having to take this thing apart again. So uh, so everything's hooked up. I think I just need to hook up the battery and uh, fingers crossed that this fixes the engine so we can finally move on with this project. All right, fingers crossed. Here we go. This thing normally takes a little while to start up. Put a choke on. Come on! Yeah. Is it getting spark? Let me try some go-go juice. Just a little bit. Come on! Come on! Uh. <laughs> Is it getting fuel? Does it have fuel? It's got fuel. That's gone. Fuel pump's working. Is the timing off? Oh, I don't want to have to take this thing apart again. There we go. It's doing something. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You can do it. Come on. Is it getting fuel? Alright, so the pump is actually working. I just think it's getting a I think I think it's just taking a little while for the fuel to get up to the carburetor. So let's just keep turning it over and hopefully it'll work eventually. Ooh. 
Joke back on. Doing something. I'm gonna test drive this thing in my driveway for a little bit. I just mainly wanna see how it drives. I'm dying to test drive this thing. I need to stop before that old man comes out and cusses me out again. All right, so we finally got to see a little bit of what this thing can do. Unfortunately, I couldn't really go full beans. I maybe went quarter beans or something. I, I, th again, this is my neighborhood. This is my yard. I can't really uh, start doing donuts in my driveway. I, I wish I could, but I can't. Especially because of my really nice neighbor that is home 24-7 and has nothing better to do but to uh, cuss me out. So anyway, now I'm not 100% sure if what we did fixed the engine. Um, it does seem to run better, it has more power, it's more responsive, uh, but I'm looking at the coolant, which is just water right now, 
and it's not really, uh, it kind of still looks a, looks like a milkshake a little bit, but um, it could be just res residue in there. That's why I put water in it so I can flush it out a couple times and clean it out. So I did kind of want to do that in this video. I wanted to flush it out a couple times and put fresh water in it until it's hopefully eventually stopped. Uh, turning into a milkshake, so, but I can't, unfortunately, I need to end this video here. Um, I'm actually, tomorrow, leaving for Redbeard's Garage. We're doing a fan meetup slash collaboration. Uh, we're going over to, uh, where are we going? Windrock, I think. We're going to R R R Windrock, and, uh, which we're actually going on Friday and Saturday, and I'm uploading this video on Sunday, so by the time you guys see this, It'll have been too late, but I will be doing a post on Instagram today, hopefully, um, of me going over there. And so if you follow me on Instagram, then you would have found out and potentially, uh, you know, been over there. So now I noticed this thing needs two things. It really could use power steering and it also, which we know that we've known this ever since I built this, it could really use a really wide profile tire on the back. As soon as I get on the throttle, even on the pavement, it just spins the tires like crazy, which is kind of cool. Which the reason I left that tire on there is because I want to take this thing to an empty, you know, abandoned parking lot and just do crazy donuts and burnouts and just burn the back tire off of it and then change the tire. That's why I left that tire on there. But I just can't find any abandoned parking lots around where I live that don't have don't trespass signs everywhere. So eventually, I am going to be changing the back tire to something. I'm not really sure what yet. Possibly also changing the front tires because these things didn't have the greater brake. The brakes were the brakes worked fine. It's just the tires just lock up and it just skids, especially in the grass, which is kind of fun. But brakes are nice. Also, traction is nice. So I, eventually, I am going to be changing the tires on this thing. So one idea that I had that I kind of want to get y'all's opinion on is what if, for just a little bit, what if I turn this t into an off-road vehicle? What if I put some really knobby tire on the, wide knobby tire on the back, change the front tires to a skinny, tall, and change this thing into like a cross-cart, uh, off-road-ish vehicle? We would have to change the suspension, just lift it up a little bit, that's not really that hard to do. Just lengthen that pretty much and then change that a little bit move it down a little bit more wouldn't be that hard and I think it'd be pretty cool to see it see what this thing can do in the dirt uh, let me know what y'all think of that idea but eventually I will be taking this thing somewhere and actually doing a road test I'm not gonna be making this thing street legal just because of the nightmare process I'd have to go through to get this thing street legal Fenders, windscreen, you know, fenders over the tires, brake lights, headlights, taillights, and then insurance, and then tags, and all like it's a little, little too much work, and I probably wouldn't even drive this thing that much on the road anyway. So let's just turn it into like either a track vehicle or a dirt track vehicle or a drifter. Or I don't know. We're gonna do something with this project because I know you guys have been one. You guys have been commenting in a lot of my videos, where did this thing go? Why haven't you been working on this thing? And it's just simply, I don't know what to do with it. There's just not that many places that I know about that the couple places I have researched in, in North Carolina say you have to have like, you know, certification to race. Or, now granted, I really haven't looked that hard at trying to find a place where I can take this thing. The couple places that I've found they're more like NASCAR racing, and you have to be certified. You have to be an actual. Ra you can't bring something like this over there. They're just gonna take one look at it and be like, "That's a fire hazard," and say no. So I need to find a place that doesn't really care, that lets me do whatever I want on their track. So anyway, enough rambling. I gotta end this video here. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see ya in the next video. Oh my lord. Oh wow. That uh that came out pretty fast.
I always make a mess in here. 